it's your buddy peace and harmony with you here today we're going to focus in on the flying monkeys the smear campaign the entourage of hitherto uh supply seekers the uh the narcissist wannabes the comrades those confidants to the narcissist or psychopathic abuser now when it comes to the flying monkeys when it comes to the smear campaign you have to understand a few indelible truths and one is that the narcissist will by virtue of their disorder they will seek the accumulation of supply they will seek uh, they will seek the uh co the uh comfort of an entourage essentially the power of numbers when it comes to extolling their position uh when it comes to supporting their viewpoint the narcissist knows very well that it's important to surround themselves with a number of people who keep them at their helm, who keep them in their power strategy, who keep them in their narcissist throne, so you will, if you will. So why does the narcissist do this? Why do they have such a strategy? Why are they st so strategic and have these flying monkeys who will come at you, who will furthermore uh, seek to be on their side and not have their own standpoint. Why are they so limited? Why are they so locked into the narcissist? It is because the narcissist has been able to love bomb them. The narcissist is, mu is very adept at love bombing those others who they seek to keep uh, entrapped within their strategic of power, manipulation, supply, their superiority. Remember, their love bombing is to help raise others up. Their love bombing is to have them basically deluded into thinking that being on the side of the narcissist is going to give them a superior position in that community, in that network, in that family, in that, in that um, oftentimes we see that in a family or workplace setting, where the narcissist will basically create the atmosphere that you are stepping up if you are able to be on my side. So because of their heightened sense of superiority through the things that they say, the things that they do, the things that they have, um, their, uh, the, nar the narcissistic talk, the love bombing, they get others to very much uh, become part of their entourage. Why do they do this? It is because the the narcissist will oftentimes utilize such tactics as um, special gifts, uh, special trips, special phone calls, being one of the exclusive groups. So it's the ultimate uh, cattiness, it's the ultimate uh, inner click that the uh, gossip queen, king, drama extraordinaire hitherto, you know, we're going to call the narcissist that they will create, um, within that setting. So they'll cl basically to create a click within a click or a, uh, an entourage within a, a family. They'll create a, um, a little, uh, sort of community within a community in and of itself to keep them at the helm, to keep them at the superior, uh, hierarchy or the senior level. And they very much crave this position of power. They crave this position of control. And so they seek this relentlessly. Day in and day out, they have uh, an insatiable need for this. So very much um, creating a smear campaign is how they get by. So it's the whispers here. It's the whispers there. It's, you know, the uh, talking about people behind their back. It's the gossip sort of quality of their talk. It is the um, the condescending uh, tone that they'll use when they're referring to others. It's the ultimate, you know, we're going to psych out the opponent sort of strategy. So if you can know this and know that the narcissist will use this strategy as a methodology to create the smear campaign, to create the gulf which you have to swim across in order to become, again, part of the consensus, part of the whole, part of the group, realize that this is part of their tactic to keep you working harder and harder and harder and you're solidifying their position 
in their posse, in their family, in the workplace, etc., when you continue to keep them at the focal point of, you know, look at them and reacting to them. So really the whole goal of recovery and really sort of being able to move beyond narcissistic influence is to realize their tactics. And oftentimes in the awareness, you can see this moving quite clearly. And then when you see it moving, just do not let it impact you. You, uh, once you realize it, it for the strategy that it is, it just rolls off your back. Uh, it just rolls off your back like, uh, like beads of water, uh, like rose petals. It just flutters away because when, when you see that they do this as specifically a ploy to try to psych you out, psych you out means to get you unnerved, uh, get you shaky in your boots, to get you, uh, you know, quaking, uh, to get you quivering, to get you, um, upset because they know if they can get you upset, then they've got you. Um, you do not want to allow, permit this narcissist to have control over your emotional being. Because as you can realize, if you have the control of your emotional focus, your physical focus on anything really outside of yourself, if it's driven by this narcissist, you're never going to get that experience of freedom, that luxury of being able to just be yourself be contained, uh, living by your own values and knowing that you lived up to your own standards. You're always trying to concede to the narcissist. And, um, and so when you're in a circle with them, if you have to be around them, for example, if it's a family member, um, an extended family member or a work associate, I know I have a lot of viewers who work with people like this and it makes it a very high tension, uh, workplace, a very high, uh, tension setting to try to focus and maintain and not feel less than and not feel provoked, not feel triggered while you're with these, these individuals. So I'm going to give you a tactic here to help you understand uh, the smear campaign. Just like the water cooler effect, when, when someone wants to uh, take another down, they will try to psych out their opponent, um, their, uh, another person in their family, another individual in the workplace, someone who's specifically doing very well. They'll try to uh, pick at them, tease them, just, you know, uh, not give them attention. So it's a way for them to create a negativity because then the negativity becomes more powerful than the positive. As you know, people want to hear, you know, information about or tornado versus a sunny day. You know, people always want to hear the tragedy. They want to hear the dirt. They want to hear the grit. They want to hear the negativity. It's much easier for people to hate than it is to love. So it's easier for people to go into the, you know, ga the gossip train than it is to deflect it. Because um, if you, the moment you deflect it, then you're not part of, you know, you're not into the belonging. You're not into the consensus. So oftentimes people give in to the narcissist, to their love, the narcissist love bombing for really the, the value of the belonging and, and feeling like in their own mind that this is, you know, uh, the person who wants to take charge because of their charismatic ways that I'm just going to go to where their drama is and I'm going to get, you know, hoovered in again, it's easier to be drawn into a tornado than it is to a sunny day. So it's much easier to react and acquiesce and sort of really get um, sequestered into their their uh, their negative talk and and get things turned around that way. Again, they're always going to try to be first to the punch. So one tool I really um, really um, want you to get used to is that of um, higher awareness. And higher awareness is just realizing that this is what those people who are addicted to feeling superior to feeling better than to, you know, that holier than now entitled, uh, persona that they are going to use these ploys. This is just what they're going to do. This is their methodology. This is how, this is how they belay their enemy and why they make enemy out of their supply is because it's a very good leverage tool for them to just sort of manipulate these people and use them essentially as a springboard moving forward. So they're able to launch off the backs of others rather than being, you know, launching themselves out of some, something upstanding and worthy. So when you see this occurring, 
just say, okay, I now understand that this is just one of the tactics that a narcissist is trying to use to unnerve me. This is just what they're trying to do to upset me. I'm going to let this fall off my back like, like rose petals. Basically, I'm not going to allow this to trigger me because I know that this is just a tactic. But the tactic has no power here. It has no impact here because I see it just for the manipulative tactic that it is and it does not upset me. It is, does not have power over me because this person does not reign power over me. This person is does not have control over me. They are not my, uh, my ruler. I have rule and dominion over my own energetic being, my own emotional content. I have dominion over my own focus and my own contribution. And I'm not going to allow myself to be limited by their toxic, negative smear campaign, supply love bombing that they will become engaged and engage others in. And if you feel isolated from them, if you feel alone from them, this is your personal power speaking up. And realize that you are not having the same energetic vibration because you are not matching their energy vi uh, vibrationally. You are not matching their falseness. You are not matching their insecurity. Remember, the seat of a lot of the narcissistic way is because it's based on insecurity. It is based on a feeling of inferiority. Remember that underneath that mask that you're seeing is a person who feels very insecure and has to create this mask, this persona of being larger than life, than being, you know, very charismatic, overtly uh, charming, taking the helm, getting all the attention. They need to create this position. It's not a give and take with these people. They are not good at sharing the spotlight. The spotlight is always going to be over there. So just don't, just let it be. Like the Beatles song, you know, there will be an answer, let it be. You just have to let them be that way. That's who they are. You don't have to uh, take on the responsibility for evolving them emotionally. You don't have to confront them. You don't have to um, ingratiate them. You don't have to be supplied to them. You don't have to be that role to them. Take your energy elsewhere. Take your focus elsewhere. You know, if you are engaged with them, just really... Um, realize that this is going to, you know, just think of them almost just like they're at a water cooler. They're engaging in their smear campaign and tactic. Realize it has nothing to do with reality. Realize that they're going to engage people in that smear campaign way. Let them talk about people behind their back. Let them live in their lower nature. Let them feed each other's lies. Know that you're not missing out on anything. Know that you're not less than. Know that you, you're that all that's all a mask and a ploy that's designed to make it appear almost like a film, to make it appear like you're shut out, or make it appear like you're isolated, or make it appear like you're not in the room. It's because you're wanting to engage with them, but you're trying to engage with people who aren't engageable. They are not open to really a lot of the, um, you know, uh, sort of. Uh, empathetic sort of sensitive nature that you might have or that you might bring to the table. Um, the Remember also that the narcissist in, in light of their smear campaign, the narcissist and the psychopath also tend to view empathy as a weakness because they don't have the ability of empathy. They are intimidated by it. They are intimidated by those people who demonstrate the heart, the sensitivity, the awareness the, um, uh, you know, the sort of, uh, the richer values that are, are present. They are not able to really, um, they, they don't have that ability. So as you can imagine, it's almost as if you were to be, you know, um, going to another country and you don't speak the language, you would not be able to engage with someone who doesn't have that same repertoire with you. So they don't have that same repertoire um, of, of empathy because the narcissist and definitely the psychopath, they do not have empathy. They, it is a quality that they lack. They don't, it is a character, it is a talent, it is a skill, which has, you know, ap they have an apathy, they don't have an empathy. 
So an apathy means that they don't care, they don't stand up, they don't have that heart, they're not able to see where others are coming from, they view it as a speed bump, they think it's slowing them down, it's keeping them away from their limelight, their spotlight, and anything that takes them out of that is not to be attended to. So if you feel like you are being basically labeled as stupid, less than, inferior, and it's oftentimes because you possess the qualities of empathy, a heart, an open heart, an open mind, and you're aware of the idiosyncrasies that are toxic. You're aware of the falseness. You're aware of the lies. And furthermore, because of this awareness that you possess, you furthermore want to assist them and be supportive of them and and uh, basically be you know, have a, a real tight communication and relationship with them because you're able to assist them by, by virtue of your empathy and by virtue of your loving nature, you're able to give that to them. But see, they are not able to receive that. They're only able to receive along their supply line. So, you know, if, if you are there as a supply to fan their ego, you know, oh, you know, this, 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 you, 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 let me just be a fan here. I'm just, you know, I'm here just to fan your ego. It's not about an interdependence with them. It's not about a give and take. They're not able to do that. They are so barred up. They are so clenched up because of their uh, heightened need to be better than, have control over and power over others, coupled with their lack of empathy. They're not able to like let that out. They're not able to uh, communicate comfortably with others. They're they're going to become insulting. They're going to become biased. Um, they're going to uh, perceive as um, we as a weakness. Basically, empathy. So if this helps, I hope this helps bring to light um, because you know the um, the narcissist uh, does not contain empathy. That's how you know they're able to plow through people. Um, that's how they're able to take advantage of others is because they, they lack that sensitivity. Um, they are very, you know, they can be very vulgar. They can be very brash, uh, very insultory. Um, it just makes your jaw drop, uh, you know, what, what they can do and how rude they can be. But remember, it's their addiction to their power. It's their addiction, addiction to the need to manipulate and control others that doesn't ever turn off. It's part of who they are. It's going to be constantly who they're, you're going to be faced with. So as soon as you can realize that and then let, let that go and don't try to seek basically blood from a turnip. Don't, you're not going to get, you know, um, it's like trying to find water in a desert. You're not going to find that comfortable, warm, fuzzy feeling with them that's just not in their emotional repertoire. Because of their lack of empathy, they're not able to engage others in that same manner. So even though you might have desired it, you might have tried, you might have spent years of your life seeking that validation because, you know, you were born into this family or because you work in this organization and this is your job or this is the love of your life. And then, you know, this is just somebody who you, you know, have um, basically um, admired or you have uh, made, you know, your commitment to your family and you live by the belief that blood is thicker than water and you know, I will give everything for my family. I'll lay down my back for my family. But yet when you do this, this opens you up to abuse, <laughs> being taken advantage of, and then accepting this behavior, realize you don't have to accept it. The smear campaign is meant to create, you know, by the virtue of numbers, um, you know, a number of people who are uh, basically caving into the love bombing of the narcissist to be on their side, to keep, you know, there's always going to be a hierarchy. There's always going to be an imbalance, which they're trying to create. And so when they, when they do this, you know, there's always going to have to be somebody. There's always going to have to be a power vacuum. So if you have found yourself as the, the scapegoat of this, realize that there's oftentimes a legacy with which this is perpetuated on. There's a reason there. Perhaps because, you know, you, you have this uh, loving vibration, you have a gentleness about you, you have a sensitivity, you have a heart about you, so you possess within your, gen, you know, within your aura, within your personality, within, you know, your, uh, your energy, you have this sort of gentleness, sensitivity, and uh, 
a loving connection to others, but which they really do not possess. So they're not able to match that energetically. They're not, it's not able to fuse. It's not able to come together with them. So when you understand um, that this, you know, oftentimes they're, they have a closed heart, a closed mind, and this is just how they operate. And, you know, they will end up, you know, paying the price um, through lack in their own life. And they're aware of this, but they will, you know, they furthermore, they, they shut it out through many of their defense mechanisms. So when this occurs, just don't let it bother you. Just keep skipping along, keep humming along, make your contributions. Um, don't let it sti stifle you. Furthermore, use it as an opportunity to grow and uh, furthermore, develop yourself beyond. Because once you realize you're not stuck by uh, that that judgment for that um, that narcissist out, outside of you is very liberating because it can help help you to understand that you can keep within your boundaries within that setting, and furthermore, focus in on your on your yourself and get using that opportunity as an opportunity to feel a sense of independence and liberty and focus on what is nourishing and important for you and furthermore that you don't have to share it with these others but you need to expand the community of others which do uh those others who do reflect and do understand you for who you are and are able to embrace those values and then furthermore take that to the next level because the narcissist um really oftentimes those people who talk smack who talk back who gossip those are not who you want on your team uh, those are those people who you don't want because those are perhaps the false people who just, you know, by virtue of their personality, um, they're going to focus on the negative, constantly flaw find, and they're not going to be supporting and nurturing really of, of you know, of, of what you are and what you're trying to accomplish. So when you can really kind of bundle that up, put a bow on it and understand, you'll see that it gives you the opportunity to branch out into other settings, people, events, and causes, which can help you take you to the next level and furthermore, just shed the narcissistic shame-based ways. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.